Hello, my name is Ken Chitwood. I'm the director of the Link Bible Institute and the main facilitator and teacher for our new second quarter spring semester class on world religions. Uh, over the next 10 weeks, we'll be covering eight major religions at work and uh, shaping our world today. Uh, they're also the same religions that are very active here in Houston. So it's a good opportunity for us to learn about not only the religions of the world, uh, but the religions of the world that are active here in our very own home city. If you're not from Houston and you're uh, checking this out from elsewhere, I invite you to learn more about the religious landscape of your own hometown and see what religions manifest themselves in major ways uh, in your city or your community. Uh, what we're going to have here is a, a short version of our first class, which is uh, an introduction to world religions. Uh, we're doing this class uh, two hours every Tuesday night uh, in downtown Houston, and we're going very in-depth into each one of the religions. We're going to have some special presenters on Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism, and we're going to have some special experiences along the way. We invite you to join us for those classes. If you'd like to just come for one or two, uh, you're more than welcome to, or if you'd like to join our class late, you still have an opportunity to uh, come next week or the following and still be able to get credit for the course if you'd like to. Uh, if you want to do that, please email me at ken at linkhouston.org or visit our website www.linkhouston.org and click on the link for the Link Bible Institute. You can learn more information about registering and applying for classes there. Or you can just show up too. Uh, we're at San Pedro Lutheran Church in downtown Houston at 1501 Houston Avenue, zip code 77007. Now with all those formalities out of the way, let's begin our investigation of our journey through uh, world religions. Um, in the class, we asked for experiences with religion. Um, I shared a little bit about my experiences with religion um, as a child, kind of looking through various religions. Shortly after confirmation, I had a lot of friends who were, uh, you know, Buddhist or Mormon uh, or uh, a couple of friends that were Muslim. And so I asked them more about it, learned more about it, got copies of some of their holy books, uh, went to, uh, you know, a Buddhist temple, a Mormon stake, and accompanying a friend to a masjid uh, in, our, in our local small town. And so I got interested in world religions, and also as I interacted with people from around the world uh, doing mission work in Mexico and Indonesia, New Zealand, South Africa, Hungary, and a couple of other places, really started to open my eyes uh, to all the different religions that are in the world. And, and it made me question more of what they're believing and what they're teaching and what they're uh, expressing in their actions and in their uh, sociological communities. And uh, so it got me interested in religion. And we found that uh, the students in the class, too, they had had experiences, first-hand experiences with individuals, whether they be uh, Muslim or Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, Buddhist. Uh, and so we all bring some experience with another religion. I, and I invite you to reflect on that um, as we go through this course and to share it with us as well. If you'd like to post a comment to this video or, um, or write to me or anything like that, you're more than welcome to share it with folks because it helps shape our learning. Now, the first question that we address uh, is, are, are all religions the same? And we were studying religion, but in doing so, you know, we're lumping eight religions into one world religions class, but what, what allows us to do that? Are we saying that all religions are the same? You know, are we, should we just study Buddhism as Buddhism, or should we study uh, Confucianism as Confucianism, or Islam as Islam, etc.? Um, we're not saying all religions are the same in this class. Um, but that is an opinion with a history. Um, our textbook, Stephen Prothero, who wrote the book, God is Not One, uh, the eight rival religions that are shaping our world, um, he writes that this is an opinion that has a long history, uh, one that has kind of a codified, uh, written down history, starting around 1795. Uh, William Blake, the poet, painter, and, and prophet of his day, you might say, um, talked about how these religions are all just different paths up the same mountain. And now we don't agree with that. Uh, this book and, and this class will treat them not as different paths up the same mountain, but different paths on different mountains. Uh, because to tell someone who is Buddhist that they're trying to climb the same mountain as a Christian, or to tell a Christian that they're trying to climb the same mountain as a Buddhist, is to be disingenuous. Is is not something that they would readily accept and go, oh yeah, yeah, we're, we're just trying to get up the same mountain. No, they would reject that. They'd say, no, our mountain is completely different. And so if we're going to understand these religions as they are, then we really want to make the effort to treat religions uniquely 
and we want to really make the effort to treat religions as uh, different mountains with different paths. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about what this uh, mountain and path um, idea is uh, later on when we talk about the structure of our class and how we're going to study each religion. Uh, Stephen Prothero on page two of his book, God is Not One, uh, shares that it, this idea that all religions are the same is a lovely sentiment. I mean, really, the people behind it, uh, they want to have religious unity. They want to have religious peace. But um, Prothero and myself would argue that it's actually uh, not that lovely of a sentiment, that it's dangerous, disrespectful, and untrue. To say all religions uh, are the same is not to lead to more peace and unity, but actually leads to more confusion and potential for conflict because it's disrespectful uh, to people who hold a religion to say, well, your religion is just like this religion, when really it's not. So religious differences. If we're saying religions are different, um, why is that important to say? Why is it dangerous, disrespectful, and untrue? Well, religious differences not only matter to religious practitioners, as we were talking about, but have real effects in the world. See, the ideal of religious tolerance has morphed into the straitjacket of religious agreement. Um, you know, when you look at the world, you will see that different religions are having different ideas about how to do things, how to shape the world, how to interact with government. Uh, we see that going on even within religions. So you look at um, Iraq, and you see Iraq, and you see the Sunni and Shia split there uh, in Islam, and that's a tension. And you also get Sufis entering into the mix there. Uh, you get to see this also in India, where you've got Hindus, and you've got Muslims, and you've got Christians, and they've all got different opinions, and certain things have been politicized. And then here in America, you've got um, you've got Christians uh, that are the largest number, and you've got this evangelical with a capital E Christian uh, sub-society, uh, and then you've got you know, Southern Baptists and Roman Catholics, and in Roman Catholics, you've got Caucasian Roman Catholics, and the Hispanic Roman Catholics, and everyone else, and You've got your more mainline congregations, you know, Presbyterians and Lutherans and Methodists. And all of this has real effects in the world, and they're all different. And, and, and it's not only to say, oh, you know, you're a Methodist, you're the same as a Lutheran, and, you know, a Methodist gets their hackles up and a Lutheran gets their hackles up. But it's to say we don't really understand the situation until we understand the religious differences that are at play. And if we look at the conflict uh, going on in Iraq and say, well, Sunni, Shia, Sufis, they're all the same. That's to ignore some very real issues at stake in that conflict. The same is true in India. The same is true here in the United States. Uh, to ignore the differences is to ignore some of the issues that are at play uh, in the in the context that, that we're, we're talking about. I mean, we don't just give a limited view of history uh, to our students on purpose. Uh, and that's what we tend to do sometimes when we say that all religions are the same, is to give a limited view of what religion is and to give a limited view of how religion plays out in various circumstances. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that it's okay to disagree. Uh, we are kind of uh, allergic to argument these days. Uh, we believe that any time an argument starts, well, it's just going to end in, in blood, uh, sweat, and tears. And that's not true. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to get in an argument as long as it's a peaceable argument. Uh, there's a difference between having a disagreement and having a shouting match. And, and I think what we need to encourage is that when you get uh, you know, a Muslim and a Christian together, they can disagree. It's okay to disagree. Now, we don't want to say it's okay to yell at each other. It's okay to take this to the next level and get physical about it. Um, but it's okay to say, you know, you have your opinion, I have my opinion, and we disagree. It's another thing to say, okay, you have your opinion, and I have my opinion, and we're both right, or uh, we're both wrong, or, or we're both kind of searching after the same truth. That's not what we're saying. We want to be able to disagree. We want to be able to say that we believe we're right and you believe you're right and we both think each other is wrong and discuss and talk and dialogue and learn from each other a little bit along the way as well. I think um, healthy argument is the best way to learn. And so that's encouraged in this class as well. If you hear something that I say or another student shares or something that's written down in our text and you go, mm -mm, wait a minute, I don't agree with that, be sure to share that. Uh, you know, raise your virtual hand and put up a comment or send an email or uh, give a phone call even and get involved in the discussion because it's okay to disagree. Now, largely in part, uh, or the reason that I think we're kind of lumping all religions together is it's the tendency of people who know little about something to kind of overgeneralize.